So, you know what I struggle with besides, like, everything? <laughs> um, I struggle with making my characters look the proper age. My default, so what I tend to draw when I'm not really thinking about it, is I tend to draw characters that look either, like, teenage or in their early 20s. I tend to draw very young people, which kind of makes sense. I have a lot of young characters in my work. When I was learning how to draw, I was focused on drawing teenage and young 20s characters. So that is that is my default. That is what I do when I am not pushing my my skill, I guess, and I'm not challenging myself. Yeah, which makes it very hard when I have to draw a very young person, um, like a child or a baby, or when I have to draw someone who is older, so, you know, someone who's middle-aged or elderly or anywhere in between all of those. Now, I do find when I'm drawing, like, an infant or a baby, it is a lot easier to differentiate them from um, a much older character, which makes sense because babies have very distinct proportions. And honestly, so do like kids compared to like teenagers. But I tend to draw, if I'm drawing like a child, I tend to draw them at the wrong proportion for their age. So if I have to draw, say, like a five-year-old character, I might draw them looking like a ten-year-old by accident or something. Now, admittedly, Depending on the kid, they will be like a different height. You know, growing up, I was a kid who was always very tall until I averaged out when I was a teenager. But yeah. <laughs> so like, I know there's exceptions to the rule, but you can definitely like tell when a character is under five years old compared to when they're like 10 years old. And I have trouble drawing that especially from imagination. And the same goes for, like, characters that are older, I guess, so, like, 30s and up, where, like, you can definitely see age setting in. Maybe not with 30-year-olds. I mean, they look more mature than, like, a 20-year-old, but, like, you don't look super old when you're 30 or even when you're 40. But there's definitely subtle signs of age that happen when you are that age, and I definitely need to work on being able to show that. Um, so ways that I'm trying to, like make myself better at designing characters at different ages is I am always trying to study more people at different ages. So like drawing different kids, drawing different adults at different stages in their lives. Um, you know, instead of only drawing models that are like young and in their 20s, drawing models that are older, you know, who might be elderly or middle-aged or 30s or whatever. And another way that I really would like to challenge myself to draw characters at different ages is to design characters, like in my own style, because I have a very cartoonish, stylized style, drawing my characters at different ages in their life. Like, it would be really cool to draw all my characters and say, like, what they looked like at a different decade. Like, maybe more when they're growing up, because there's so much change from when you are a baby to when you are 10. Um, so it would be good to draw like several stages of like childhood, then teenagerhood, and then a decade on from there. And that really helps showing how to draw age within like my own style. Because that's the thing, because I'm drawing like very cartoon stuff. It's been stylized, I draw big anime eyes, I draw very like simplified features. You know, how do you show wrinkles at different stages in your life? Because like you might be getting the beginnings of wrinkles when you are say like 40 and then you get more as you age. Or like what are other signs of aging like posture and um, hair color, you know? when your hair goes gray. There are some people who get gray hair when they're much younger and some people who get it when they're much older. Like, looking into different ways people grow and age and then applying that to my cartoon style. <laughs> so one thing I always have to do when I'm drawing characters at like different ages than my default is I always have to grab references and then push the features of their age, I guess. Um, so if I'm drawing, say, like a child character who's like six, and originally I draw them looking more like a 13 year old, I need to sit down and reiterate on them until they look the proper age. So like in that case, if I'm aging them down, you know, I'd want to give them like a bigger head or bigger eyes, bigger ears, um, smaller features, shorter limbs, making them smaller. Uh, sometimes it helps to draw them in comparison to, like, my default. So grabbing, like, an adult person and drawing them next to this child to make sure that, like, their proportions add up because, you know, kids only stand so tall next to an adult. Whereas if you're drawing them, like, by themselves, then, you know, you might draw the proportions weird. Um, and it's always good to have reference to make sure that I'm drawing the character to look 
their age. So yeah, so I always need to push things and redraw things until they are where they need to be. Because my first pass at everything is always very default. That goes with like anything I draw. Um, I definitely need to do that whenever I draw child characters especially. There you go. If you're struggling like me, I hope this helps. Like always, grabbing reference is the best thing you can hacking do. So do it. Reference your art, man. Man. Okay. I am going to talk about these two children. They are sweetie darlings. So this is Tori and Floyd. Tori is on the left. Floyd is on the right. Um, they are children. <laughs> they are from our RP Wordsmiths. So Bones talked about two other characters from Wordsmiths earlier this month. There should be a card somewhere you can click on if you would like to watch that first. But Wordsmiths is a very old RP. It is, it has magic in it. It's in a modern setting. The magic is very vague. It honestly could not be there and the story would still work. Um, but it's a very fluffy, romancy drama RP. And it was an RP that we went on for so long with that we got a second generation. It's one of those RPs where you RP the children of the main characters and the main characters as they get older. Okay, there's some setup that comes to like how these two came about. So, I won't get too much into it because there's another Wordsmiths video coming out that will talk about the adult characters some more. Um, but there is a character named Dawson. He is the father of two of the main characters. He's also Floyd's father. So Dawson has two adult sons. During the main portion of the RP, I guess it's not the main portion because like the stuff that happened after like the quote unquote main plot went on longer than the main plot. Anyways, Dawson. He has a waifu named Connie. Um, they have two adult sons, uh, Slough and Padilla. During like the first portion of the RP, at the end of it, Connie and Dawson uh, go through a divorce um, where he's leaving her because she was very abusive. But right at the end of like when they're separating and all the drama's going down, she reveals that she is pregnant. There's a lot of like trauma for her and Dawson around like pregnancy because like whenever their um, marriage was falling apart, um, she would like have a pregnancy. And so like that kind of happened with um, her and her first sons, they are twins, Slump Dilla, where like because uh, her and Dawson had kids together, he felt like really obligated to stay with her even though like their marriage wasn't working. Um, and then once again when he's finally separating with her, she's like, I'm pregnant again. Um, so it causes a, like a, a bit of a stir where he's like, he wants to stay there to be with the baby. He's a little bit worried that like she won't take care of Floyd very well. But she's also on the mend, like the reason that she was going like doing a lot of abusive things was because, like, she was in her own cycle of, like, trauma, dealing with mental health issues. I think she has, like, borderline, borderline personality disorder. So when she is pregnant with Floyd, she's getting treatment for this, and she is really excited to, like, have a baby again, because she really likes being a mom, and she, like, she writes children's books, she really likes kids, um, but because, like, uh, with her first kids, she was going through, like, a lot of distress and stuff. She was very abusive. I'm, like, I feel like I'm making, like, excuses for someone who's being abusive to her kids, but, like, I think what I'm saying is that having borderline personality disorder does not mean you're an abusive person, but it also doesn't excuse abuse. Anyways, so when she's pregnant the second time with Floyd, she is, like, getting treatment. She's very excited to, like, have another baby. Dawson does decide to separate from her. He's fallen in love with someone else. There's too much trauma between them, but he's like, I still want to be part of Floyd's life, and he still cares about Connie, because, like, you know, they were married for so long, and, like, he knows that she went through a lot of trauma and stuff, and he cares about her, um, but he doesn't want to stay married to her. So they do break up. Um, Connie has Floyd. Floyd is a huge sweetie. <laughs> he's got, like, a really big family. I think Dawson gets custody at first, but Floyd, when he's living with Dawson, he's got, like, Dawson. He's got Dawson's, like, second wife Linda. He's got Slough who also lives with Dawson because Slough, he's living with some disabilities so like it's easier for him to live with his dad um, and his family so him and his wife live there uh, with Dawson as well and so Floyd gets to live with this big lovely family. Dawson is also rich so <laughs> Floyd is a little bit spoiled but he gets to live with like his big brother and his big sister-in-law uh, and his mom 
or sorry, and his stepmom and his dad, and that's great. And then he gets to go visit his, like, uh, his mom, Connie, and she spoils the crap out of him because she loves him so much. So he has a very good life. Oh, also, I should mention, this is, this is important for Floyd. Floyd, um, when he was born, he was assigned female at birth. So originally he was Flora. I totally forgot about this because later, as he gets older, I think it's when he's like 10 or 11 or so, he like, he realizes he is a trans boy. Um, and he comes out to his family and they're like very accepting and loving and they like help him transition and stuff. And it's very cute. It like melted in my heart with all the sweetness. Um, that's Floyd. <laughs> he's very rambunctious. He likes to play sports. He's full of energy. Um, and sometimes it comes out with like aggression. He really likes to... He likes getting attention by, like, causing trouble, I guess. Like, he likes to annoy people and have fun, but, like, he will start fights at school and, like, he's rambunctious and he always wants to, like, jump around and play and stuff, which isn't always good with his big brother Slough, because Slough has trouble moving, so sometimes Floyd will be too rough with him, but it's all good. As he grows up, he gets better at it. Um, and so Dawson starts, like, taking him out to, like, exercise and get his energy out, and they get him into, like, team sports and stuff. And they go on walks on their, like, the trails behind their house and stuff, uh, which is where they are in this image. They are on the, the trails near their house, um, their big mansion type place. <laughs> so the girl, Tori, she is Floyd's half-sister. Um, she is the daughter of Dawson and his new wife, Linda. Her full name is Tourmaline, which is a kind of gemstone. So Dawson is the one who picked out her name. So Dawson, he has, like, a history of, like, choosing ridiculous names for his children. Like, his his first two kids are named Slowby Lippy and Guy P. Padilla. So when he's choosing a name for Tori... Everyone's like, oh no, he's gonna pick the most ridiculous name, and he's like, he's like making jokes and saying like, you know, ridiculous names to call her, um, and they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> and then finally he's like, well, what about Tourmaline? And at first Linda's like, we're not calling her Tourmaline, that's ridiculous. And then he's like, no, it's this beautiful gemstone, and she's beautiful, and eventually everyone comes around on it. And it gets shortened to Tori. Uh, cause it's less of a mouthful to say. So Tori is a super cutie. She's very quiet, um, especially next to her big brother Floyd, um, who is very rambunctious, steals all the attention. She is very quiet. Um, she's often, like, she, she likes to, like, deal with things on her own. Like, if she's ever having a problem, she's, like, she's, like, I don't want to, like, cause a ruckus because everyone else in the house will, is causing a ruckus because, like, Slough is a big personality and Floyd is a big personality. So she's, like, I'm just gonna hide and do my own thing and just talk to my mom about stuff. And she likes her dad, too, because her dad's very quiet and grumbly and they just like to sit and read books together. But Tori is, um, she's a sweetie. She often is worried about, like, she tends to blend into the background because she's very, like, she chooses to be quiet and keep to herself. But she's also, like, sad about it because her parents are really nice. They, like, see this and they try to, like, pay more attention to her. Not always pay attention to the person who's, like, yelling the loudest. She's also, like a little nerd and she loves science stuff and Floyd is always trying to get her to do science experiments with him and she's like okay let's go study all the plants in the backyard and he's like no by science experiment I meant let's go throw water balloons at Annika. Annika is their their sister-in-law and Tori's like sometimes she's like okay and sometimes she's like no <laughs> but yeah her and Floyd are like cute friendos. He looks out for her and stuff and they hang out a lot. Cause like, you know, they have their big brothers, but their big brothers are like in their thirties and they're like little kids. So they, they are, they're closer with each other uh, than with their older brothers. So yeah, that is Tori and Floyd. They are super adorable babies and I love them. Oh, <laughs> Floyd also... <laughs> I oh my god, there's so much to this RP. There were so many, like, plot threads that I haven't even touched. But I remember toward the, like, the end of when we kind of dropped Wordsmiths, Floyd was bullying a boy at his school 
for being like he kept calling him like a nerd and stuff and like weird and he kept like bullying him and causing fights and stuff um but eventually like Dawson went and met with this boy's parents the little the other little boy was named Ben I think um so he goes to meet with his parents and it turns out his parents are like these two two gay dads I know one was named Andrew what was the other guy's name Okay, so the other guy's name was George. So it was Andy and George. George was Ben's biological dad. So him and his wife are divorced. And he is now with his boyfriend, Andy. Um, and they're raising Ben together. Well, Ben also lives with his mom. But he he's also hangs out with George and Ben. Shoot. <laughs> Sorry, George and Andy. Too many names. Right. So Dawson meets with Andy and George. And, like, they they try and figure out what's going on with their kids. Um, and it turns out Ben is being bullied at school. And Floyd's kind of leading the charge. Because he feels very, like... He feels like a bit of a misfit at school because, like, like he's dealing with being, like, the only trans kid in his class and, like, you know, he's very loud and attention-seeking and kids are mean to him because uh, he might come across as weird. So he starts kind of acting out his anger by, like, bullying Ben, who is, like, this little nerdy kid who I think I remember was, like, a bit of a furry <laughs> and he, he got, like, a little cattail or something and wore it to school and kids bullied him. And so, like... Dawson and the other dads, they work it out, um, they get Floyd to apologize, and then Ben and Floyd kind of become friends, and they start hanging out together. And I think, I can't remember if, like, Ben had a crush on Floyd or something like that, but yeah, they were cute. They, that was a cute plot thread before the RP was dropped. <laughs> um, Tori also likes her, her other big brother, Padilla who doesn't live with Dawson. He lives with his boyfriend, who eventually becomes his husband. Uh, they live elsewhere. And so Tori really likes visiting Padilla and his boyfriend Armand because they they are super posh and they love delicious food and fashion stuff. And Tori's like, heck yeah, let's go wear cute dresses. They will buy her all the cute dresses. That's them. They're really cute. I really miss Wordsmiths. It was such a feel-good RP. Not at first. At first it was very dramatic, <laughs> but it became very fluffy and cute. So that's all I have for today, guys. I know people have been asking, so my Instagram is now in our description down below. So if you want to follow me there, I post all of our Inktober stuff and art and pictures of our pets. So go check that out. Bones doesn't have an Instagram. Well, he does but he doesn't ever use it because his camera's broken on his phone. But yeah, go follow me there. Also, go follow us on DeviantArt because Bones really wants people to talk to us on DeviantArt. <laughs> go say hello if you have an account there. Okay, that's all, I guess. Goodbye.